What's going everybody? Outcast FBV here. I'm going to go over with how to change bearings on a Hyperlite motor. This particular one is a 2307 2522 team edition. Um, it has a helicopter type base and has a bolt for the bottom. Let's get right into this. First, you're going to want to take about a 700 degree soldering iron and put it in the tip of this bolt. And what is that's going to do is it's going to increase the temperature of the bolt so that the thread lock unseats and lets the bolt go. If you don't do this, the chances of you stripping the bolt out and not getting it out are very high. This is put in with high temp thread lock. For that reason, we gotta heat it up. This is the best way. This one's already been heated up just a little bit, so I'm gonna go ahead and take it out very carefully. I'm turning it with lots of pressure going down. I'm gonna try not to obscure the view. If you're gonna strip it out, this is when. Be very careful. Don't use an Allen key, use a driver like this. The chances of you getting it sideways And stripping it or higher with an Allen key. Alright, this sucker is finally out of there and a bunch of glue came out with it and got the washer off. Let's get right to hell and get this. Grab this by the base. Real quickly, just pull it off. You've got a bearing in the top, you've got a bearing in the bottom. Uh, so, what we're going to do is normally I use a 1 16th center punch. On this one, I'm using this uh, flathead driver. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reach inside, grab the edge of the bearing, get a hammer. Didn't quite come all the way out. There it goes, got that one out. On this side, I'm going to use a uh, flathead screwdriver. This one reaches in and goes right across the entire bearing. Tap that out. Now both the bearings are out. What I do when the bearings are out, we're going to reuse these in part of the tool. We're going to mark these with a sharpie so that we know these are the ones we took out. Sometimes it's hard to tell. Now this is the tool that I made to put these bearings together with. What we're gonna do is take two new bearings and two old bearings, the bolt and washers as listed in the description. You're gonna slide on the washer, or a couple washers in my case, the old bearing. Then we're gonna put on a new bearing then we're going to slide that into the base of the motor. We're going to hold that in place. Put a new bearing on top. An old bearing on top of the new bearing. Washer. Two washers in my case. And then the nut. And what I'm going to do here is very carefully Sorry if I obscure the view. Tighten this together. And as we tighten this together, we're going to use the old bearings on top of the new bearings to slowly push them in. As you can see, I'm getting this done with hand pressure. And turning. <clears throat> You'll feel when it stops, the bearings are seated. Take the tool apart. Take the old bearing and washers off. 
Take the rest of the tool out. And now we have perfectly pressed in new bearings. Now you may want to do the last little bit of tightening with a wrench. But basically you put it back in reverse. Slide your bell on. Put on the washer. And then put your bolt back in. Be sure to use red temperature thread lock on the bolt when reapplying it be very careful you may even want to clean the threads up a little bit but that's it that's how you change a bearing in a hyper light type motor uh, this will work for pretty much almost any type of fpv motor um, if you like this video and you'd like to see other types of tricks and tips uh, for working on stuff and refreshing your uh, motors just leave a comment if you'd like to see something different or if you'd like me to do something different just let me know and uh, thanks for watching. Okay, I just wanted to get through the first part as close to five minutes as I could. Now for those that want a little more uh, in-depth information, I'm gonna go into a little more detail about a few things. Um, a tip when removing the first bearing, this particular piece of material is suede and it's filled with uh, uh, BBs and so this is called a shot bag and it works really good for hammering and hitting stuff on uh, it's what I particularly use to to bang the bearings out of uh, you can stack up some towels um, some people with this type of helicopter base aren't going to have any type of problem getting that bearing out the initial bearing out also when you reach in make sure that you are on the bearing and not a piece of the motor some of these motors have a lip in between the two bearings and you can put the punch on that and strike and actually damage the motor and you don't want to do that so be really careful that you're hitting on the bearing on this initial strike to remove the first bearing now if you're using a different type of motor like a lumineer motor this has the bearing flat on the bottom so hitting it against this isn't going to knock it completely loose there's a trick where you can take a socket set the motor on top of the socket this particular one is a three quarter inch and you lay the socket like this put your punch into the hole find the bearing not the lip and then knock the bearing loose into this particular cavity um, so that's how to do it with a lumineer type motor and a hel helicopter type pedestal something else when you have your motors apart like this is obviously something happened your bearings are grinding or possibly the motors not turning properly in this case this motor was not turning properly upon inspection you can see a damaged bell this bell took a serious hit on the concrete and is slightly deformed right here if you look inside and inspect the magnets directly across from the impact you have scraping on these magnets on the inside and so basically if you look at the stator and we spin it around we see that right here we've absolutely had dragging on the stator so this part of the magnet was dragging on this part of the stator and why that happened is because this top bell bent um, and further inspection we notice that this base of the motor this tab is bent um, so that means that the arm deflected enough to bend the base of the motor so not only do we have a damaged bell but we have a damaged base and basically you know this stator and everything is still good but this motor probably i wouldn't reuse it because it's too important that the motor sits flat um so unfortunately this motor is really no parts on this one that i can reuse it's just gone um with this lumineer motor we you know you can look inside you can inspect your magnets these look 
pretty clean. They don't look like they've had any contact. This particular motor was just getting serviced, so it got new bearings. And now it will have a new C-clip put on and uh, should be fine. Um, quick tip on bearings is try to get the bearings from the manufacturer of the motor. Don't just get them off Amazon or something like that. Um, the people that sell these motors almost always sell replacement bearings and so I got these from Hyperlite um, Pyrodrone and so uh, they don't cost too much usually they're about five dollars per two sometimes you can get a discount if you buy a bunch of them and um, one other thing about this Hyperlite motor when I was removing this screw this is a 1.5 millimeter uh, tip um, I noticed that my 1.5 millimeter tip was just a little bit loose. It, 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 there's some movement there. I didn't like that. That would, could very easily lead to a strip screw. So I found that my 1 16th tip fit into this bolt perfectly. Um, this happens a lot in metric bolts sometimes they're just not built to a higher standard and so in this particular case i found that a 1 16th bit fit this bolt perfectly and just absolutely no play what a great fit um those are just a few tips that i have for um inspecting your motors, inspecting your magnets, inspecting your stator, and uh, getting bearings out of different motors. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them there in the comments. I'll be happy to get back to you. Thanks for watching.